Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So in my last video, I talked about how to record external synths using Ableton Live. And one of the comments that came up again and again was, why don't you use the external instrument device within Ableton to do your recording? This thing here. And the answer is, I actually do sometimes. So I figured I'd make a video about that. Before I get started, I should mention that the external instrument device that I'm gonna be covering in this video is only available in Live Standard and Live Suite. It's not available in Live Lite. Okay, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to assume that you have an external synth plugged in, both for MIDI and for audio, uh, and that you've got the inputs enabled in Ableton Live. My last video covers how to do that in a little bit more detail. Okay, so here we are in the default uh, Ableton Live template. Uh, I've got two MIDI tracks, two audio tracks. Uh, I'm actually gonna pair this down so we just have one MIDI track and one audio track. Right now, this is sort of like the classic setup for recording an external synth. It's what I showed off in that last video. Uh, we've got one MIDI track, which will store all of the note data from our external synth. And we've got one audio track that's for recording the audio output of the synth. So if we were using the manual MIDI technique, what we would do is we would configure the MIDI outputs to send MIDI data to the Arturia Microfreak and also to receive it uh, if we were using that as our controller. But we're gonna do something a little bit differently this time. We're actually gonna open up the instruments panel on the left and we're gonna drag external instrument onto that MIDI track. And as you can see, uh, a little device popped up down here. It's almost as though we were working with a software-based synthesizer within Ableton Live, but it's actually something that acts as a conduit with external synths. And that MIDI configuration that we would otherwise have done up here, we're actually gonna do down here. So we're gonna say that we send our MIDI out to the Arturia Microfreak, and we're gonna say that we receive our audio from this, which in this case is uh, Universal Audio Apollo Twin. Now, if I go and I play notes on the synthesizer, they'll actually get played through here. It's interesting, this MIDI track has now been converted and it's almost like it's a software-based synthesizer. Uh, it outputs audio and we can even have effects on it. I can drag uh, effects from over here. And now when I play something on my controller, the effects play back as well. So right now we've got everything contained in this one little track. We don't even need this audio track at all right now. Even better, the external instrument device has automatic delay compensation, so uh, it can handle latency and sync issues really, really well. Uh, let's record a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. So that was a super basic pattern. And as you can see, uh, the data that I just recorded was recorded only as MIDI. Uh, I'm gonna kind of play with the MIDI notes and uh, yeah, see what I can come up with out of this. And then once I have something that I really like, I can record the synth playing the fixed version. Okay, so that sounds a little bit better. Uh, I'm actually going to do something that I recommended in the last video, and I'm going to write down uh, the patch number that I'm using, um, which is a patch that I made on the Microfreak, uh, so that I don't forget it. There's another cool thing that you can do. You can actually specify a patch number uh, down here in the program change section, um, and it will essentially send out a program change message to your synth. Program change stuff was invented in the early 80s and it's a little bit janky. You'll have to do some trial and error to figure out which patch numbers actually match to the patch numbers on your synth. Like for example, this is patch 150 on the Microfreak, but in order to actually get it to um, send the right program change message, you have to set it to bank two and program 22. This is still pretty powerful. It means that in theory, you could have a bunch of different clips in your Ableton session and have each one mapped to a different voice on your synthesizer. Of course, most synthesizers uh, these days are monotimbral, which means they can only play back one sound at a given time. Still, those program change messages can be pretty useful for uh, mapping specific sounds to specific clips within live. Okay, so right now, everything that we have is in MIDI data. And that means if you try to export your song, let's say that I was done with this and I wanted to export it, Ableton's going to do something pretty strange. Uh, at least I thought it was pretty strange the first time I, I tried to do an export. 
it's going to throw up a dialog box that tells you it's rendering your track in real time. Uh, and what it's doing is it's actually playing back the entire track's worth of MIDI data and recording the audio right during export. And then it mixes that in with your track at the last possible minute. I'm sure that workflow of exporting your MIDI audio is useful for somebody, but uh, I've never used it once. I would much rather take control of my audio recording myself uh, for a number of reasons. For one thing, if I've got a long track, I don't want to have to wait the length of my track every time I hit export. I export my tracks a ton so I can listen to them on speakers in my kitchen, listen to them in my car, whatever. I just don't want to wait that long. I also don't want to have to keep my synth plugged in at all times and make sure that I have the right audio setting uh, just to be able to export my tracks. If I accidentally bump into my synth and um, change the presets and I haven't actually specified presets in the clips, um, yeah, it will ruin the track. Most importantly, I want to reuse the same synth many times throughout a track, you know, different presets for different parts of the song, and you just can't do that with that workflow. So my motto is record early, record often. So we've established that we don't want Ableton to do this weird last minute recording of our audio. How do we get around that? How do we do the recording ourselves? Uh, it's actually super easy. Basically, we just use this audio track. And normally, if you had just a MIDI and audio track setup, you would set your audio track to receive its data from your interface directly. We're going to do something a little bit differently, though. Instead of having our audio come directly from the external interface, we're going to actually have it come from this track here, the first track, which is called P150, as you can see up here. What that's going to do is it's actually going to allow us to take advantage of that fancy latency compensation that is built into the external instrument device down here. Uh, and we're going to arm it for recording. And another important thing is we're actually going to turn monitor off for this track. We don't need to actually hear the results of what we're doing until it's time to play it back. Uh, another thing that's worth mentioning before we hit record, there's a little menu here that allows you to choose at what stage the recording takes place. Uh, is it before any effects that you might have on this channel? Is it after? Uh, I recommend always choosing pre uh, to get the driest possible signal. You can always apply effects to this audio track later. If we were working the timeline, we would hit record here. I'm still working in session view with clips, so I'm going to click here. OK, here we can see what it's recorded. And look at that. It's perfectly in sync with no latency. If by any chance you discover that your audio isn't in sync, uh, you can actually go back to that external instrument and uh, futz with the hardware latency here and uh, figure out what your hardware latency should be. And that kind of like manually overrides the latency compensation that it otherwise would be doing on its own. OK, so there's one more thing. If I now try to export my track, I'm still going to get this annoying dialog box where it tries to do the real-time recording. The way around that is to go back to your external instrument track and just turn off the device. Now when I try to do the export, it's fast as anything. I'm going to turn off this track. And now that I've got this audio recorded, I'm free to duplicate this and start the whole process over with a new melody line. Switch to the audio track, record that. OK, so that's how you use the external instrument device in Ableton. Uh, so which technique should you actually use, the uh, plain old MIDI and audio track technique or the external device? The official line from Ableton is that you should use the external instrument device. Uh, I sometimes use it and I sometimes don't. Depends how I'm feeling on a given day. Certainly, if you've got a bunch of different synths that are all running into Ableton, uh, if that's your setup and each synth is going to be a unique voice in the music that you're writing, uh, definitely use the external instrument device because that delay compensation is going to be a lifesaver. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could hit like. And if you haven't done so already, now is a great time to subscribe. It's free and you'll be notified whenever I make one of these videos. See you next time.